of how we try to move out of a bear's line of travel before they're very close. There's also another bear swimming downstream as well, too. So even, and it looks like um, 435 and her cub have moved out into the mouth of the river, there's another bear at the far end of the bridge that was gonna get very close to that group of people. Bear in wedge, approaching bridge. Holly in cub, approaching gravel bar from river. Copy from halfway between corner and bear trail. And it really does pay to know these bears on an individual Holly level. Cub on gravel bar, headed toward standby. Not only because it's fascinating to know them as individuals, but it's also important from a management standpoint. If a bear gets too close to people or gets too close to the buildings near Brooks Lodge. It's pretty stationary on the gravel bar. Um, other bear is just swimming underneath the bridge in the wedge. Copy. And I might continue this um, this thought after uh, some of the radio traffic guys. Holly and Cub bit. are approaching point from the gravel bar. We're moving all the way back to Bear Trail. Copy. Other bear just came underneath bridge, is continuing to swim and fish downriver. Corner copy from Bear Trail. When you hear it like this, you really do get the sense that they're bear traffic controllers. Yeah, well, on the wildlife viewing platform, we are kind of like air traffic control for the, for the area. So I think you'll probably be able to see um, the family on the bank over there walking upstream. She's kind of checking out that other bear and that other bear is just casually swimming downstream looking for fish. Holly and Cub appear to be headed toward corner. Um, as far as I know, corner. yes. yes. Uh, down the <laughs> and Cub are at corner. Gabby, I can see them. Other bear is now between Point and Downriver Island. Gabby. And I think you're getting a pretty clear look at 435 and her cub. You can get a screenshot of that. She'll likely be there in the fall too. In September, she's a much, much fatter bear. So it's really interesting to co just compare and contrast the size uh, between well, Except July and September. Up river on closed trail. Corner copy. Down cubs are continuing up river on the close trail, just past the waiter sign. Um, second bear is in the mouth, headed toward the lake. Copy. You're, be, you're clear to begin approaching. Um, Holly and Cub are almost at Death Willow on the closed trail. Um, other bears in the mouth. Happy. And when bears stand up like that, that's not a defensive posture. That's a information gathering posture. Bears have eyesight that's maybe equivalent to ours and they can can't see colors there's pretty good evidence ev evidence of that so when they're standing up on their hind legs they're trying to see something better they may be trying to smell something better too 
snorkeling. Um, seems like it may be headed toward gravel bar, but stand by. Copy, corners back at corner. Are Holly and Cub past the decilos? They are. Um, I was just holding off a sec to see what this bear was doing if it continued to move upriver. Um, but I guess we can go ahead and open the bridge. Gabby, bridge is open. So oftentimes we have these limited windows to get people back and forth across the bridge. This is one of those opportunities where they're going to try to thread the needle in a sense because we have two bears down at the mouth of the river and then we have the family that's upstream too. Lee and Cub are at the end of the closed trail. Not sure what direction they're headed yet. Holly has re-entered the river just off of um, Big Island. We're going to get these people across to see what happens. Happy. Just close after these people cross. Um, I would turn them around. Turn around. Holly looks like she's veering in my direction, so I'm going to continue to send them in your direction. Okay. Yeah, MTS Gator, you need to back up. Yeah, MTS Gator, yeah, you need to let them go. If you guys could back up. So you can see it's a bit of a challenge to get people to move. They couldn't see. I didn't have it yeah. because we can see okay. faces. I didn't okay. have it cropped in. Okay. So yeah, getting back and forth across the bridge is quite a challenge. I mean, we want to give people access to the places that they need to go, but we need to make sure that we're giving the bears space too. And I've said that probably several times um, during the past hour that I've been here. Platform 640, does that visitor continue towards satellite? A visitor um, below the platform. Yes, yeah, she did. She's over here now. So we have two bears in the mouth of the river, uh, slowly coming towards the corner. Copy, and Holly and Cub are between Big Island and platform here. Copy. Hey, sir. Sir, you need to come up here. Yeah, come on up here. Thanks. Corner is going to move to the back of corner. Copy, Holly and Cub are moving downriver again on platform side. Copy. And Holly and Cub are just not visible on, on the camera that I'm operating right now, so that's why we're still focused on the bear out in the mouth of the river. And she's coming maybe into view again. Yeah, I think we'll get to see her in, in just a moment. So she's been swimming back and forth upstream, still doing it um, sort of casually, looking for fish. Well, while she's hidden by the bridge, I'm just going to look at some questions. Okay. Corner. Have anyone um, from the lodge near you in your vicinity? Negative. 
All right, please let me know if they're looking for someone on a four o'clock flight. Happy. So I just turned my radio off, so you get got to give you a little bit of a taste of of uh, what it sounds like um, here at the Brooks River. Bears everywhere, people everywhere, trying to make sure that we're giving bears space. It can be a very difficult task at times, but that's the that's the goal that we're work, working towards. And uh, 435 just swam under the bridge here, so I'm going to point the cam quickly. There you go. Okay. It looks like we might get a, a view of the spring cub, a pretty good one coming up here pretty quick. It may be hidden by the grass, but it may come to shore here in just a second. Spring cubs, when they're born, they're they only weigh about a pound, so you can get your can of diced tomatoes out of your um, out of your pantry and hold that in your hand, and those are like what 14, 15 ounces or something like that. So a brown bear cub, when it's born, is about that that size. When they go to the den in the fall, they may be closer to 70 pounds or more. So they grow quite a bit in their first year. She's right on the the ramp of the bridge right now, which I cannot see from here. There's willows in the way. Mike's favorite tree, but it's maybe not mine well, right not now. Not my favorite, but I'll leave that a secret. Okay. It, doesn't, it doesn't grow in cat mine. I'll, I'll just <laughs> let everyone, not, everyone know that. I do like willows, though, and I get teased a, teased a lot about it, but that's okay. I'm, I'm comfortable with my nerdiness. So. <laughs> You're not going to tell us what your favorite tree is? You're not going to tell us? If people really want to know, well, let's see if it comes up in the, in the, in the comments. Let's do a doodle poll. A doodle poll. <laughs> <laughs> what is Mike's favorite tree? <laughs> People should guess. What is Mike's favorite tree? <laughs> be a, there's a delay, so I won't see any responses for a few. Well, we'll give them a second to come up with what your favorite tree is. Since we can't see any bears right now very well, um, this is an opportunity to scan the area and show uh, some of the, the prominent mountains in the area, uh, which are especially important as they are uh, probably the majority of the bears nest on those, or nest, <laughs> yeah, they build little nests and fly up there. They den on those mountains uh, when they hibernate in the winter. So uh, I'll drive and we'll start over here with this one. Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll go to the one that's seen most frequently on the cams, and that happens to be Dumpling Mountain. Dumpling Mountain its summit is about 2,000, 440 feet if I remember correctly and from Brooks camp along the trail and the route to the summit It's about a five mile hike to the top. So it's a actually a really beautiful mountain on top You can see Bristol Bay from up there on really clear days. You can see many of the volcanoes um, in the area on, on very clear days Bears will then up on Dumpling Mountain and there are places on Dumpling Mountain that I can go to fairly consistently and find bear dens so certain slopes seem to attract um, attract bears every year they tend to, to den on very steep slopes that collect a lot of snow. I've seen them on south-facing slopes and north-facing slopes. So it doesn't seem to matter on 
doesn't the, the aspect of the slope doesn't seem to matter. It seems to be more or less whether or not that slope can uh, collect snow. And if you want to see an example of one of these dens that Mike has explored, uh, we do have on our Flickr site a video that Mike made of him exploring one of the dens. And uh, I, I don't know what the link is for that, but somebody on the on the chat uh, board on, on explore.org can post it probably faster than then we can get back to the office and, and, and post it ourselves. But nice little video there that shows you the size of them. They're not these monstrous, cavernous uh, dwellings that they inhabit. They're tight-fitting holes in the ground. Yeah, basically just big enough for the bear to turn around in. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pan over to the next one, okay. the next mountain. And it'll take a while because it's quite a pan. <laughs> I don't want to make people sick. And give them also, this way you can also see the lay of the land perhaps a little bit better. So right now we've, we're back at the corner is a pretty much dead center on the frame and then there's going to be the mouth of the river and then off in the right hand side you'll start to see a ridge on the horizon. Oh, here comes the family oh, right in front of us. We're going to make you sick with that but we got... He was oh, scared. And the bus came. The bus just came, that's what scared him. <laughs> family bus, please stay where you are. There's a Hollywood cup right here. So, just a great, great view of her right now. Well, there was. <laughs> and the bench got, or the yeah. railing got. Okay. Okay. So we're not. I'm not sure if we're going to get a chance to see them on the cam, but they're they're moving behind, sort of behind the bus right now, in, in a way. Platform Valley Bus. Platform. Holly and Cobb are now in the Spent Marsh, making their way slowly parallel to the Valley Road away to Platform. Copy. Uh, bridge is still closed. Bear just on the end of Big Island. Coffee, thank you. Several visitors coming down the Valley Road. Satellite coffees, we're pulling them up. There and the elbow is stationary, just looking into the river, just about where those trees are laying over the river. Copy, um, Bear is in Big Island, slowly heading up river. Gonna give it a minute, um, then we'll open the bridge. Copy. People on the bus are getting a great view, I believe, right now of Holly and Cub. <clears throat> and that's our, our bus uh, that just got back from the Valley of 10,000 Smoke Platform, Store. Valley bus. Platform. Holly and Cub have turned around and are reapproaching us on the Spit Road. Copy. It did sound like the bear um, and her cub had turned around. I still can't see them, so we're just kind of waiting for it to come back. I would wait a few more minutes. I see them. So there, that was probably just a maybe just a slight avoidance of that vehicle um the vehicle may have not have known that she was there um, oh, as it came down 
you know, she she stopped, but she wanted to continue down that way. She just went around it. So we're still still live here, folks. I'm just um, taking a little break. Um, I see it, <laughs> a lot of questions about what my or comments about what my favorite tree is. Uh, maybe we'll get to that later. Maybe, Christmas. <laughs> maybe, maybe just before we go off air, um, I'll reveal the answer. So. So there are a lot of other bears in the area still right now. There's one in the mouth of the river. Um, there's still some upstream at the same time, too. I think you should be able to see a 435 Holly in her cub at the, at the mouth of the river. And I, I did notice I was just um, took a moment to browse some of the comments and questions. And somebody was asking, you know, why do some bears get nicknames and why do others don't? It, it sort of the nicknames sort of come about organically. We don't actually have an official naming system. In fact, the numbers are sort of assigned arbitrarily. I like using numbers a lot because they are neutral. They there's no meaning associated with the number. So 435, it's, it's just 435. For example, you're talking about the bear nicknamed Otis. Four eight bridge is open, folks. <laughs> uh, Talking about the bear um, nicknamed Otis, um, his number is 480. You know, some names can have positive meanings associated with them, negative meanings associated with them. So that's, you know, why a lot of times I'm hesitant to to use to use names. But in the the nicknames when they when bears are assigned nicknames, it just happens to come about organically. It's mostly, uh, you know, just uh, somebody comes up with a name that seems to fit for whatever it. it um, for that for that particular bear so there's no official naming system when they're assigned numbers and every bear that's seen in our official monitoring sessions is assigned a number when that happens they uh there's a series of numbers that the bear monitor happens to pick and they'll just assign those numbers based on uh well well they, they just pick those numbers sort of randomly within the, that group Sorry if my, my train of thought is getting uh, distracted here. There's kind of a lot going on with people and stuff like that. So I'm getting, <laughs> my eyes are not kind of um, at, in the same place as my mind is. Uh, spring cubs? Oh, and then 402 just okay. uh, emancipated hers. So, so there's one running around that's cub size right now that that is not with a mom. Um, I've got it on Ligoris if you. Okay. So we yeah really um it was able to pan to a different mountain. That's it. this is another mountain where bears will den on, but this one's called Mount Ligoris. Mount Ligoris is composed of igneous rocks, so. Uh, 
granite granite like rocks on on Mount Lagores. And it's very rounded. This that mountain was overrun by glaciers during the last ice age. Maybe not the most recent advance of glaciers overran it, but when you're talking about the really big advances of glaciers that happened several hundred thousand years ago in this area, that mountain certainly was overrun by glaciers over top even. And that's why it has that nice sort of rounded shape. And the summit on that is about a thousand feet higher than Mount Dumpling. Uh, so it's about 3,400 feet if I remember correctly. I just remembered what your favorite tree is. Oh, really? I won't say anything. Okay, I just okay. Because <laughs> uh, we have talked about it before. <laughs> so Rose I'm going to pan to the, the right now um, from Lagos, and you'll see the spit road again. And then you'll start to see a, a more uh, majestic looking mountain come into view. And that's Mount Katolanat. Yeah, so the, the view right now is Mount Katolanat. I think we got a, a little bit of a glimpse of that before. Mount Katolanat, unlike Mount Lagos, is sedimentary in nature. There's a big fault that runs uh, between these two mountains and on each side of the fault, the rocks are very, very different. So you have uh, late Jurassic sedimentary aged rock for Mount Katolanat, and then you have early Jurassic igneous rocks on, on Mount Lagos. So very different in shape, uh, very different in, in composition. Mount Katolanat is one of those mountains where bears also den on. Uh, there's some really interesting bear trails on Mount Lagos up in the tundra where bears walk in the same places over and over and over again. So you see these footprints across the tundra up there. It's a great mountain to hike on, a wonderful place to explore, very beautiful up there. And I'll pan around to the other one that's almost visible from here, maybe. <laughs> and people are scattering that don't want to be on camera. <laughs> But right behind there is another mountain called Kalez, right behind the trees. So you can't really see it. We'll show it to you another time on a, on a live chat, um, probably in the fall. Uh, but that's what's over there. And then all the way around, uh, like another 90 degrees, is the, is the last mountain in this area that is uh, of, of any prominence. And that's a, a mountain that doesn't really have a name. It's got a USGS benchmark number on it. And uh, locals call it uh, Mount Brooks. Or Brooks Mountain. Yeah, one or the other. Brooks, or, Brooks Lake or Brooks Mountain. <laughs> and we've got a bear coming close here, so we'll get some shots of this. Valley Road traffic. 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 And if you were just to take a, a quick survey of the age, estimated age, and the uh, of, of these bears down here, and the sex as well, you're going to find the ratio is very heavily skewed to younger bears and adult females. Hardly any, hey there, buddy. Uh, hardly any adult uh, adult males down here. And oftentimes that's because the adult males can compete with one another to fish up at Brooks Falls, but these other bears are displaced from this area or from the area up at Brooks Falls, and they're forced to fish down here where it, it, oftentimes it's a less successful, less successful place to fish. So all the rock fall coming off that mountain, what is, is that a 750 degrees volcanic? Which yeah, so somebody was just asking me about uh, Mount Kalez. And on Mount Kalez, that's- uh, That's most, the one we couldn't see. Yeah, that's but. the one we can't see. That's mostly mostly igneous okay, there as well. The yeah. And then volcanism is supposed to be really big, and we flew over the volcanoes coming in from Anchorage. Much of that present here? Yes, actually, uh, we can't can't see them from here, but the volcanoes on the Aleutian Range here, there's been two volcanic eruptions in the last century um, in, in the park. And actually, Katmai's uh, was established in 1918 to protect uh, the landscape called the Valley of 10,000 Smokes. And that was the largest volcanic eruption of the 20th and century. And that's still an active... Site. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, Nova Erupta, you can go out there in the ground in some places around Nova Erupta, the vent for that 1912 eruption, and the ground is still warm there. Oh, cool. Um, in some places, not hot like you're going to get burned, 
But then um, all the volcanoes around the Valley of Ten Thousand Smokes are active. So there's big fumaroles, big steam vents uh -huh. on the side of Mount Griggs, for example. Mount Katmai, um, there's fumaroles likely underneath the, um, the the lake in the caldera, and the caldera resulted from the 1912 eruption. When it sank. When it, yeah, when that when the mountain collapsed on itself. Um, Mount Trident uh, out there erupted in the 1950s and 1960s. And you can still go up on the on the the newest cone on Mount Trident with the lava flows there, oh. and the ground is still really hot in some places. Wow. And then you have um, Mount McGeek out there with a, a vigorously bubbling sort of. Uh, you can keep talking. Uh, you know, so for the folks listening to me, um, we're just about out of battery here on the camera and the folks at Explore that uh, need to do the switching for us need to be heading out. So we're going to go ahead and shut it down here and in a few minutes it'll switch back to the regular cam. want to thank all of you for um, joining us today. This was completely unscheduled, just a way to test the equipment and make sure that we could maintain the quality feed on this camera while we were doing it. Uh, we still will be doing uh, a live chat tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Alaska time and again at 5 p.m. Alaska time. That way we will get um, at least a bunch of time zones covered in it and um, both chats will probably be recorded so you can join us again uh, you know, in, uh, later if you can't make those live times. But be ready to post your, your questions to us in both the discuss comment section and also by using um, a Twitter hashtag, and I can't remember what that is right now. It's probably hashtag bear cams. But uh, there's information posted on, on Explorer's webpage uh, under the, the, the video window. So check that out. and. We